As parents, it was always kind of a weird thing because, you know, we grew up with don't let your kids have too much screen time. Screen time's bad. Don't do that. And so we very much had that mindset of like, oh, well, he's on the computer kind of a lot. When we had children, it was really important to us that we support what they want to do, really just trying to follow their lead. Also, he hacked all the parental like filters, so it felt so <laughs> pointless to just try to do anything. That's so true. I started to really like programming, like fall in love with it. Whenever I learned that I could help actual people, I think when it comes to things as basic as communication, right? Like me and you take that for granted. I'm talking to you right now. People like my sister don't have that privilege. Let's go find some more bluebirds. Buses are big on that, are at the top end of what Dello cares about the most. Oh, she's taking the lead. She knows where to go. Did you see this? Thomas buses are- Usually Sunday night, we'll take her, we'll get her a large French fry McDonald's, and we'll go down to the bus barn. It sets the tone for the whole rest of the week. It's the ritual. Oh, fireworks day, Mom. Here, you show me. Della has a rare genetic disease, and it's a mutation of the ASXL3 gene, also called Bainbridge Roper syndrome. Oh, she has a lot of the hallmarks of autism, so she's interested in people and she'll be next to them parallel playing, but not engaging with them socially. As she got older and started to become more mobile and saw that, hey, I can manipulate my world, I can have a say, a lot of things changed. Archer started eating lunch with her when he was a senior and she's a freshman. Lunch. I know, yeah, we're at lunch right now. Well, it's a big school and our lunch periods get pretty crazy, pretty chaotic, pretty noisy. And I know that she might not be as used to that. She was pretty spooked. And so, you know, me being a senior and her being a freshman, I wanted to kind of provide her that initial level of comfort, like, hey, I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna have my lunch with you so that you're not just like thrown out into the deep end with just a bunch of random people. I started developing relationships with every single one of those kids. Like I was friends with all of them. And it allows me to kind of gain a level of perspective. AAC is an acronym that means Augmentative and Alternative Communication. AAC is just a tool that people that have communication disabilities use to communicate. My parents were just kind of talking about like all the money they had spent on AAC technology, on these proprietary pieces of software. In that moment, just something clicked and I was like, AAC software, there's no like crazy mathematical algorithms behind it. Whenever you boil it down to its basic parts, it's a pretty simple application. And I was like, a lot of these things that I'm doing for my personal projects with programming, I could translate that over and potentially build an AAC app. The app that she had used before, which is the app that the school provides her, it didn't have like the words that she wanted to say on it. You know, on this proprietary app, she'd be talking about like numbers, right? Like vegetables, the weather, which is great, but I know that's not her. That's not what she wants to talk about. All right, come here. Come here, thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow. The device they have at school stays at the school. The one you have at home stays at the home. All the buttons, all the things that the teacher's doing is not the same as the one you have at home. And so the conversations that she's having, the vocabulary, the hot topics they're learning at school, it's not just you're not hearing about what's happening at school, but the school's not hearing about what she wants to talk about at home. And so if you think about, you know, just even a coworker, half of what makes that person who they are is just their interests. What shows are they watching on Netflix? Where did they go on vacation? Lucky Charms. Yeah. Oh, she does want Lucky Charms. Hey, do you want a lot or a little bit? A lot. A lot. OK. I'll put it in the When I made free speech for the first version and I handed it to her for the first time, I preloaded it with all of her favorite cartoon characters. Walter. Her special interests. Bluebird bus. Loves just buses in general. I see bus. Put her favorite foods. Chicken nuggets. I remember like she immediately was like, whoa, like this is, you know, these are all my words. 
I see bus. The first test version. It was super bad, super clunky, but it was an AAC app. And I took a video and I put it on TikTok. So I have a nonverbal sibling. A lot of apps that are made for people who can't talk are extremely expensive. This is why I have created Free Speech. Free Speech is another assistive communicative application that allows people to talk using visual buttons. Apple. And I just immediately, it started getting views. People were starting to come and be like, wow, this is really awesome. The app hit number one trending on GitHub. I got like a notification from you know, another developer, Bailey, who was working on the project. And he was like, hey, check the Explore page on GitHub. And so I'm like, okay, github.com slash explore. And I see that free speech is number one. And like, I, like my jaw like dropped. The GitHub community was like super receptive when it came to free speech. They were asking me like what I needed done when I was younger and I wasn't that great of a developer. It was my app, like it was very much my baby. I chose what it looked like, you know what I mean? Like I chose the features, but like a lot of the code was written by other contributors. It's taken me this long, you know, two or three years to be in the position where I'm like, okay, I can code this full stack from scratch. Archer has the benefit of living in a family and seeing these things. How many? One popcorn or two? Popcorn. Two oh, popcorn, popcorn please. <laughs> Coming up. Thank you. Those are the conversations we're having with him where it's, gosh, this is a problem. And how are we going to deal with this? And he's the one saying, we can fix that. I think that's Archer's contribution to the community that needs some kind of assistive communication. But it's bigger than that. It's his contribution is saying we can make it better. And we do not have to rely on corporations to make it better for us. We can figure it out. I 100% view my development as a form of self-expression. Thinking about what free speech stands for. It's free and it's an alternative to a lot of proprietary applications that cost a lot of money. I can harness my powers as a developer, if you want to call it that, to make free communication software. I hope free speech teaches people that these problems that people may think are not solvable are solvable. No project is too big, no idea is too big. Developers can use their skills to work on whatever they want. You're really good at that. I always say, you know, my sister is my first end user. I'm really making the app for my sister. I'm making the app also for people that interact with my sister, like me, my parents, and my sister's teachers. But in my heart of hearts, I'm constructing it for her. That light that I see in her whenever I actually give her new vocabulary, I see that every single time I add new words and update her pages. Is she on an airplane? Not, oh, not in the car. Oh, first tomorrow, then school? Yeah, tomorrow's school, yeah. But it's like summer school, it's like a fun school. Thinking about accessibility, I think has definitely allowed me to make better software. And I think it's allowed me to be a better problem solver and hopefully be a better person.